In this video, I'm going to show you why dates in JavaScript and Angular can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, and how to avoid those problems by gaining a fundamental understanding of JavaScript and Angular date handling and the quirks that come along with them. But first, I just want to let you know that Enterprise NG is coming this November. This two-day online conference is focused around Angular and the Enterprise. It includes talks on micro front ends, monorepos, quality and maintainability, and performance and scalability in the enterprise. Plus, there's three days of pre-conference workshops. There's even a keynote from the Angular team, which you can attend for free, although you will have to register for a ticket. Check it out at ng-conf.org or click the link below. Ticket prices do go up on November 5th, so don't procrastinate buying your ticket. All right, so to start off our discussion, I want to talk about the ISO date format. That's the ISO 8601 date format. And we can play around with this by going to a console in a browser and just doing a little bit with dates. So let's create a new date object. I'm gonna say let D1 equal new date. And here I'm gonna feed in a string. So the ISO date format, the most important thing to understand is the ISO date format uses dashes to separate out. And the format is a four digit year. So we go with 2020 and then dash and then month and day, et cetera. And you can also optionally put in T. Now, pretty much all these things are optional in the true ISO date format. You can have just the year, just the year of the month, and it just has defaults that go along with it. Same thing for the time. So after the T, we could have the time, and we could set it to like 8.30 in the morning, and then you can even put in a time zone specifier as well. But let's just go back and look at just the actual date. So I'm going to do something a little bit interesting here. I'm going to go with January 1st. And then we're going to create this date, and then let's look at the value of D1. Now I'm in the mountain standard time zone right now, and look at what's getting set in that value, what D1 is. It's actually saying it's December 31st of 2019. But you can see that when I created the date, I actually created it for January 1st. What's going on? Well, my time zone is seven hours before GMT, and the way that the ISO date format gets parsed in JavaScript it defaults to midnight of the default time zone if you don't specify a time zone, which is UTC. So this time, 5 p.m. on December 31st actually correlates to midnight UTC time. And this is a huge problem because if we don't specify time zones, then we get a default time zone that may not work for what we want. But it only affects when we're doing the UTC format. So let's create a new one. We're going to call this D2. But this time, instead of dashes, we're going to use slashes, which is not the ISO 8601 format. This is just a regular, well-recognized format, which the date object in JavaScript supports. So I'm gonna use that for my new one, and let's look at it, and notice what happens. It defaults to my local time zone when I'm using the slashes. So if I'm using the ISO 8601 with the dashes, then the time zone default is different than if I use slashes, and that's kind of the crux of this problem. We may not realize as we store our dates that if we're using dashes, the date parser algorithm may interpret them as an 8601 format and therefore apply things we don't want. But of course, sadly with JavaScript, there's no really inherent date format. Yes, there is this date object, but when we serialize our data and send it to the server and back, what we're doing is dealing with JSON. And so the 8601 format, which is the JSON format, is what's oftentimes used. Or if we are parsing dates that come from a third party and they come with dashes, or we're just letting users type in date values and they're doing dashes, then the parsing engines are going to default to this 8601 parsing, which does this thing with time zones. So let's look at how this affects our Angular code. Here I've got this Angular project. You can see over on the right-hand side, I've got a place where I'm formatting and printing out my date uh, that is the variable the date, which you could see initialized on line 11 to nothing. It's actually not being initialized, but declared on line 11. Now we're just using the regular old date pipe. So you can see I've got the date pipe and I'm giving it the long specifier. So we get everything specified out the time and the time zone. And with Angular's date pipe, it'll handle both date objects and strings. So for example, we could just set this to a string value of 2020 slash 01 slash 01. And over to the right, we're gonna get January 1st, 2020. And it's actually taking that string and parsing it to a date for us. And the date pipe is doing that. But the date pipe works a little bit different. So let's go to the 8601 format and do dashes. And when we do dashes, 
what happens is not exactly what we'd expect. We're actually getting the default time zone to the local time zone. Okay, that's nice. Now, if we're doing dashes with strings, if we're actually doing the string parsing and letting the date pipe do the string parsing, then everything works okay, right? Well, what if we don't include our day? Uh-oh, now we have a problem. Here we've given just the year and the month, and now we're getting the 8601 problem, which is it's defaulting to the UTC time zone again. And since I'm in a time zone that is before UTC, it shows up as an entirely different day. This problem may not show up if you are in a time zone that is UTC or later, because it would still be the same day. And a lot of times we do have to deal with dates as a concept without time. We don't want to worry about the time. For example, when does the basketball season start? Well, it starts on a day. It doesn't start at a specific time on that day. It just starts on that day. And that's what we want to deal with is days themselves, which is a big reason why third-party libraries like Moment and Day are popular is because they handle a lot of these problems for us. But nonetheless, we still need to understand what's going on underneath the hood. So there's our problem with strings. Let's deal with an actual date. So let's set this equal to a new date. And this time, we're going to do the same thing we did before, 2020-01-01. And we're getting that same UTC problem, which we didn't get when we just used the string. Let's try this again, but just with that string 26 or 2020-01-01. If we just do the string, then it gives the correct time zone or the default time zone, which we assume that's what we wanted. But when we actually do the date parsing with the same value, we get an entirely different thing. So this highlights some of the quirkiness of the date pipe, date parsing, and handling dates inside of JavaScript and inside of Angular. What's the solution for this? Well, the biggest solution is just to understand this problem and then know how to deal with it. One way you can deal with it is actually specifying the time and going in with the time and then the time zone and all that and just specifying that out 100% of the time. Another way to deal with it is to understand what you're trying to work with. If you're just trying to work with days and not a specific moment in time, then you may want to keep it as strings and only turn it into a date in order to do addition and things like that. And yet one more solution is to avoid the 8601 format and always use slashes instead of dashes. And then you get a default to the current time zone all the time, no matter whether you're using the date object or just having the date pipe do the parsing for you using a string with slashes. And that fixes that problem as well. But understanding this and the difference that that dash actually indicates to the parsing engine that we're dealing with an 8601 format. And so usually we get problems when dealing with that. And just knowing what's going on and how to deal with it rather than having some bug crop up because this can be an insidious bug. If you allow people to type in dates and all of your test data is fine and then suddenly somebody types in a time that doesn't work out and they're typing in one day and it's displaying to them the previous day, that could be a real problem or the next day. So keep that in mind. Understanding what's going on underneath the hood with dates with Angular will really help you avoid insidious bugs like some of the problems that we've seen here.